Want to know why Mike and I are dressed like this? Find out in this next episode of Open at Microsoft. Oh, and learn about Windows Terminal 1.19 Preview too. Happy Halloween, everyone, or happy holidays, depending on what time the editing team finishes post-production. Fun fact, we usually film um, Open at Microsoft way ahead of when the video is posted online. So it's actually Halloween for us right now. Mike, what are you for Halloween? What, can't you tell? I'm my no. three-year-old's favorite cartoon character, Rudolph. Ah, uh, and I am Christopher, the rascal elf. <laughs> so, <laughs> enough about, so enough about us. Um, let's, let's get to the reason why people are here. So Windows Terminal 1.19 Preview. It's I think it's a fairly big release, actually. So there's a lot of community contributions. So let's talk about them. Um, so... The first and arguably one of the most um, popular um, features, which also can be a contri contribution, is broadcast input. So broadcast input is a feature that allows the um, allows the user to broadcast input from one terminal pane to all other um, other panes in their terminal. So um, I'm going to enable it real quick and show you folks. Oops. So let's go command palette. I'll go broadcast input. So you can tell it's um, broadcast inputs on based on this small little broadcast symbol in this tab. So if I do a CD terminal, you can see that my input from like this left pane is broadcasted to the right pane. And yeah, it's like mostly in real time. So this is a very interesting um, feature in terms of the community, the community's response to it because it's honestly like looking at the um, issue requests, it's a great example of how the community can come together to us as like terminal and sort of up level a feature request. Um, like you see here, like, um, you know, there's the initial, the initial um, feature request, but there's like a bunch of community comments on why community members want this feature. And there's a ton of upvotes. It's honestly a really, like a really wholesome, um, feature like a wholesome feature request if you look through look through it on github um i think mike i think you mentioned in the past that this like this for this like feature request like it the feature request and the pr came to us faster than a spec right that's right chris uh with this feature uh we it was on the backlog it was something we wanted to get to eventually but we just didn't really have the time for it yet uh, but the community was so excited about it that a community member actually filed a PR for it before we had actually finished out the design for what we thought this would, you know, look like, how we thought it would be implemented. The community member just did it. Uh, so we kind of quickly pivoted. We, you know, took a couple days. We wrote a spec. We went through all the elements of the feature request, you know, everything that people were asking. Compiled a full design. And then we looked at you know the PR that we had in hand and we said, well, ultimately this PR is in line with what we want from this feature in the long run. So let's go for it. Uh, ultimately that PR did not originally merge. Uh, the community member who filed it just kind of disappeared. You know, that happens sometimes in open source, uh, but it was a great contribution. And so we worked together to kind of take that draft PR and get it across the finish line. And that's what you see here today. It's, it's mostly just that community uh, PR uh, it was really a great contribution. Um, so we're happy to ship it. You know, our users love it. No, definitely. I've seen a lot of like um, great feedback on on broadcast input. A lot of like the most common um, feedback I've gotten is finally yes, and so, yeah. something's along that, along those lines. So cool. Another um, speaking of community contributions, like another um, fun one in my opinion is um, web search. So um, in Windows Terminal 1.19 Preview, if you have um, the if you have the context, um, let me clear up the terminal real quick. If you have the um, right click context menu enabled, what you can do actually is um, basically um, do a right click over selected text in your terminal. And then you'll see this option, this web search option. And what it does is lets you search the web. So if I click on web search, 
you can see that um, it opens up a new browser and does a search on my highlighted text. This is extremely useful um, when you're debugging errors or you run up, you run, um, you run into like you know a term or command in the terminal that you don't really know. Um, and I think Mike, this started as a walkthrough. Yeah, you're right. Uh, we did uh, make this a walkthrough. Well, you know, this was on our backlog again. Another one of our thousands of open issues that you know are great ideas, great things that we want to add to the terminal, but we just don't have time to get to it ourselves. Uh, so we wrote up a walkthrough. We came up with a quick little. This is where the right-click context menu is, you know, created. This is how you add an action to it. Like this is actually, I think I had a prototype for this. I just never finished, you know, getting all the resources wired up for it. Uh, and a community member was able to take that prototype and the remaining walkthrough items and put it together and file a PR. Uh, there was a a huge edge case that we I had totally missed in the walkthrough, and the community member was great about responding to that and actually figuring out um, the whole problem there. And and it's great, you know, it's uh, super helpful, especially when you start getting the really esoteric error codes that are just numbers. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, and to address the elephant in the room, yes, you can um, go to the settings.json and change how um, web search works. You don't have to use Microsoft Bing. You can change it. You can change it to whatever um, you know search engine you want to use, including search engines I am not allowed to say on this Microsoft affiliated show. Anyway. Um, well, I mean, also, Chris, you can even yes. add other search actions to it. You don't have to just use the context menu action. You can also just like add a search GitHub for this code you know, um, or, you know, other websites that might have code and answers on them. Right. Good one. All right. So the, the um, another feature that um, has been fairly popular in 1.19 preview is something that you've worked on for a long time, Mike, and it's the suggestions UI. Uh, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. Uh, the suggestions UI is really the thing I've been spending uh, the most of my time on over the last couple of months. Uh, it's a new UI that we're working on for the terminal that allows us to put more context relative suggestions right in line with the rest of the terminal content itself, right? So think of it like IntelliSense for the terminal, uh, as Chris has pulled up right here. Uh, right now, we've only got a few different mechanisms for populating the actual entries in here. So right now, uh, you can use it to add entries from your saved tasks in your settings, which are send input actions in your settings JSON. Uh, or if you have shell integration turned on, you can use the suggestions UI to pull up the recent commands that you've run in this uh, terminal pane. Uh, but I think really the most interesting use case for this is something that's very experimental right now, which is allowing command line applications to populate this menu and provide their own suggestions. Um, and so like imagine in PowerShell, you know, you start typing a command and you want to get, you know, tab completion in there. Uh, this shell completion menu allows you to get like a visual menu with a list of all of the possible tab completion results, just like you would get from IntelliSense. Uh, it's just a much better way of using the terminal. It's a little bit more intuitive. It's, it feels like it's something from 2023 and not from 1983. Mm -hmm. And going back on, um, you know, you, I think you mentioned shell completion protocol. Just, just to backstep a little bit, what is a shell completion protocol? Ah, right. Yes. Uh, the shell completion protocol is kind of the communication layer here. It's how we've defined the way that PowerShell tells the terminal about these suggestions. And right now, that is the part that is the most experimental. We have really designed this to be very PowerShell specific at this point, uh, just to really get a prototype, a proof of concept going. And I don't love that personally. I don't want this to be a PowerShell feature. I want this to be a feature for any shell out there. I want Bash to be able to use this. I want, you know, Vim to be able to use this. Can you imagine you're typing in Vim and you can get an actual menu with all of the like 
IntelliSense completions right there in Vim, that would be mm -hmm. great. Uh, and so that's really the part that we need the most community help with is experimenting with this and finding the right way of designing this backend protocol uh, mm -hmm. so that it can be used by anyone. Yeah, definitely. And I, I've seen active discussions on it. So if um, you know any of you viewers are interested in like what a shell completion protocol is or want to help us define the shell completion protocol, please like check out that discussion in our GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're almost about um, out of time, but I did. So I was look. So I was looking at the um, closed the uh, closed PRs the other day in our GitHub uh, repo, and I found this one. So uh, it looks like the person who got this PR in was wait, Mike, is that you, Mike? Uh, yeah. It's a little explain. Bit explain. What is this? What is this rainbow frame? Uh, well, you see, we've been working on different theming elements in the terminal for a couple of releases now, you know, being able to control the color of your title bar, the color of your tabs. And we discovered in Windows 11, there's also an API to control the frame of your window as well. And so we figured, well, that's got to be a theme setting too. Why not? And in the course of experimenting with that API, we wanted to find out how quickly you could change the colors reasonably and have it still seem performant and uh yada 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 the rainbow frame was born <laughs> you know we just kind of made it a setting in the terminal nice and um yeah why well, I, I posted a gif of this online and i got a lot of i got a lot of um likes and upvotes and one of the um questions the big questions i got was how to enable this and i'm just i'm just gonna share my settings at json right now Essentially, this is a um, theme setting. So um, all you really have to do is just add um, this line experimental dot rainbow frame um, and set it to true in the theme you're using, and you know make sure that you're using that theme, and that should enable it. So now that it's true, you will see a frame that rotates or cycles through colors of the rainbow. So now. My terminal is RGB, mm -hmm. and I one one thing um, I want to point. I want one actually one question I have is so the setting is experimental dot rainbow frame. What's preventing this from being not experimental? Like what's why is it experimental? Uh, mostly because we uh, we didn't really spec the feature. We just kind of put it in and we just, cause it's fun, right? Like yeah. we, didn't, we didn't really think it needed a whole spec. We thought, you know, software should be fun. Uh, mm -hmm. So we just put it in there. We put it in an experimental because this might change in the future. Uh, we might wanna, you know, have settings that allow you to like use arbitrary shaders to control the frame color or have it based off of, I don't know if the window is focused or not. There's a lot of different options here. And we really didn't consider any of those while we were developing this. We were just thought, this is fun. People should have this. That you're right on that. A lot of people enjoyed it, and I think um, the um, the segment of the segment of Windows users who really like RGB stuff, like they they love this. It's combining like when you're in the dark room with like your your R RGB peripherals, RGB keyboard, RGB mouse, and the RGB terminal. It's it's a whole mood. So, yeah, oh, people you know how I love my RGB keyboards. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. I think this is pretty much all the time that we have um, now. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, folks, for joining us on this uh, somewhat special episode of Open at Microsoft. Um, yeah, from here, um, here from the Terminal team, we wish you a Merry Halloween and a Happy New Year. <laughs>